On today's show, I'm bringing you a brand new company that came on our radar about three months ago, and I'm super excited to have the CEO on the show. We're talking about Respire RX Pharmaceuticals, Inc. You can find them on the OTCQP uh, under the ticker symbol RSPI. And with us today is the CEO and president of the company, Mr. Tim Jones. Tim, welcome back to the show, or welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Everett, and thank you for having me. Um, And uh, hello to everyone and all the listeners. I was wondering, can you give me a little bit of overview of your company and background and, and the business mission of what you guys are on? Of course. So, um, Respire Rex Pharmaceuticals, Inc., um, as Everett says, also known as RSPI, which is their ticker symbol, is a small publicly traded company that was originally formed in 1987 under the name Cortex Pharmaceuticals, Inc., Uh, to engage in the discovery, development, and commercialization of brand pharmaceuticals uh, for the treatment of various neurological and psychiatric disorders. Um, While developing potential applications for respiratory disorders, notably dronabinol, which is a cannabinoid for the treatment of obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA as we call it, RSPI has retained and expanded its ampokine and gabokine IP in clinical phases, Uh, with respect to neurological and psychiatric disorders, and we are actively right now developing certain drug products within this platform. But in terms of the mission, the company mission is to develop innovative and revolutionary treatments to combat disorders caused by disruption of uh, neuronal signaling. Uh, We are developing treatment options that address conditions that affect millions upon millions of people globally, but for which there are very few or poor treatment options available, including for OSA, ADHD, and recovery from spinal cord injury, uh, SCI as we call it, as well as, you know, other neurological orphan diseases such as Fragile X syndrome and epilepsy. I mean, in summary, Respirax is developing a a pipeline of new products based on our broad patent portfolios for two distinct drug platforms. Firstly, cannabinoids, which we now call Project Resolution RX, which includes dronabinol, a synthetic form of Delta-9 THC for the treatment of OSA. And secondly, um, our neuromodulator pro- platform, which we now call Project Endeavor RX, uh, which includes our uh, ampokine and gabokine compounds. And these are proprietary compounds that promote neuro- neuronal function. Tim, I just want to know if you could maybe provide some sort of a, a summary or a product development portfolio that's associated with your assets. Your market cap's around $2 million. It seems to me your, your company here is very undervalued for a market cap of, of that stature. Yeah, um, I mean, let let me give you a high-level summary of our products in development and the associated uh, assets. And when we get to uh, more of the business discussion, uh, the value of the separate parts of the company will become evident um, is much higher in their individual entities uh, than combined. So firstly, uh, pharmaceutical cannabinoids. As regards our dronabinol program uh, for obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA, uh, we've had two successful phase two clinical studies uh, in OSA, uh, both 2A and 2B completed, and they both showed uh, to be statistically significant uh, in the eyes of the FDA. So we're phase three ready, uh, pending completion of a new controlled release dose formulation. We also have a... uh, long-term development and supply agreement executed with a highly reputable API supplier, uh, the largest global dronabinol uh, API manufacturer. And further to that, uh, we have laid out um, a 505B2 and NDA regulatory strategy uh, with a very reputable third party. Um, In addition, we have uh, broad enabling intellectual property for the dosage and novel formulations for cannabinoids. And, you know, with that, I think it's worth stating, um, you know, in terms of the market, this is a potential multi-billion dollar market for obstructive sleep apnea. There's an estimated 30 million U.S. patients with comparable amounts of patients in the U.K. and Germany combined. 
So I think it's worth restating that here that there are no approved drugs available for OSA in the U.S. or in other key territories. The, uh, the second uh, platform that uh, I'll talk to, uh, at a high level at least, is our neuromodulators. And just for the audience's benefit, again, we're talking about novel brain-targeting drugs. And they split into two um, distinct areas within the platform, our amphokines and gabakines. So with amphokines, we have composition of matter, intellectual property pending, uh, which, uh, of course, will be very powerful once it's approved. The API itself is scaled. We have three successful clinical trials for spinal cord injury and ADHD that demonstrate target engagement. And a successful phase 2A trial completed for our candidate indicated for adult ADHD. Uh, we also have successful preclinical studies in spinal cord injury, which is really our lead applicant uh, for spinal uh, cord injury. And phase two is uh, already planned uh, in collaboration with the Miami Project at Uni University of Miami School of Medicine. We're also planning phase 2B trials in ADHD and other orphan indications. And then last but not least, of course, our gabapines. Um, we're very excited uh, to have uh, licensed um, IP uh, with the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee Research Foundation as of August 1st. Uh, this is for IP and technology for a portfolio of neuromodulator compounds that have shown great promise uh, for epilepsy and other illnesses and disorders. Uh, the, the candidate for epilepsy is preclinical, um, but it's shown to be efficacious in multiple animal models uh, of treatment-resistant epilepsy and also in isolated brain splices from epileptic uh, human patients. Uh, further to that, we're excited that it's shown efficacy in animal models of neuropathic pain. So in summary on the gabapine, gabapines, our lead candidate, KRM81, is not only druggable, but it's ready for uh, preclinical development. Tim, you know this better than anybody. Um, being in the pharmaceutical space that you're in, it takes anywhere from two to four years to, to, to bring any, you know, commercial drug to, to use or even, even revenues on the balance sheet. That being said, how are you guys looking to capitalize uh, the, on this, the existing uh, development progress and expand the business go going forward? That's, that's a great question, Everett. Thank you. Uh, you know, I think it's important that I answer this question uh, quite succinctly. Uh, <laughs> the, the, re the response will uh, resonate across multiple different audiences. So let me give it a shot. As, as part of a very near-term corporate strategy, we plan to create two distinct standalone business units, or new codes as we call, call them, for the continued development of pharmaceutical cannabinoids, uh, which will be called Resolution RX. And then we also have Project Endeavor as the other new code to focus on the development of neuromodulators across a broad range of indications. These units, these business units, will reside under the holding company Respirex Pharmaceuticals. So further to that, uh, whilst we have recently already secured a $2 million investment commitment in just the last few weeks, and this was widely press released uh, via Global Newswire and can be found on our website, uh, we have other definitive lines of funding expected to come to fruition in the next three to six months. And these are rooted across several different investor sources. We don't have all our eggs in one basket. We have various sources. Um, but we must, as a business, however, remain focused on the medium and longer term and therefore stay active in aggressively seeking sources of additional financial investment or strategic relationships and partnerships uh, to further these product portfolios and technology platforms uh, through the course of their respective life cycles. Look, we, we've proven ourselves to be very flexible in crafting business arrangements which are not only value-adding and mutually beneficial to all stakeholders, but they, that maintain engagement, focus, and drive momentum in the pursuit of key milestones and maintaining a clear line of sight to the commercialization of our products. And, you know, the last thing I really want to get across is that our products are desperately needed 
in therapeutic spaces where there are either simply no drugs available in the case of obstructive sleep apnea or those drugs accessible fall far short of the much needed patient treatment. We plan to change that. We plan to take our long overdue, safe, efficacious, non-habit forming products to the American public and many other territories and geographies that have long been in need of our superior technologies and treatments. As for my listeners, uh, if you're looking for a great healthcare biotech company that you want to get on the ground floor, take a look at this company. I've brought you a lot of winners over the years. This is my personal opinion. I think it's grossly undervalued here at eight tenths of a cent. That's you heard that correct, eight tenths of a cent under a penny. My guest today has been Tim Jones. He's the CEO and president of Respire X Pharmaceutical Inc. You can find them on the OTCQB. Look them up. Their ticker symbol is RSPI. Tim, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Hopefully, you become a regular. Hopefully, I didn't scare you off or anything. You come back in fifty or sixty days and, and give us an update. Yeah, look, we're sincerely grateful for this opportunity to present our company. Thanks to you, Everett, and the wider Stock Day Media team for making this happen. And on a final note, we extend our hope and best wishes to one and all during these challenging times. Everyone, please stay safe and well. All right. Cheers. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Thanks very much. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by La Jolla Media LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are for educational and research purposes. Stock Day encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. 